Okay, next person, important. <coughs> While uh, um, Kepler was doing his thing with uh, uh, the three laws, Galileo in Italy was doing observational stuff. Very, very important. He was the first person to use the newly invented telescope. In 1605, an Italian glassmaker had invented one of the first te good telescopes. And Galileo took this and started pointing it to the sky and making some crucial observations based on this. If you go to the Griffith Observatory, you will see a replica of this telescope that um, Galileo used. And you will also see some replicas of his drawings that he made. He observed irregularities on the moon. In other words, craters uh, and cracks and things like that. OK, we say, what's wrong with this, or what's so special about this? Before doing this, the Catholics said, and the church said, that uh, heavens must be perfect. No cracks, no craters, nothing like that, OK? So when he, when he did this, it's starting to kind of chip away at, at those theories, you know? He observed sunspots. This is even bigger deal. They said, the sun? Wow, God created the sun. If it has a sunspot, it's going to have a blemish, like a freckle, you know? That means it's a bad thing for the sun. So some of the <coughs> uh, cardinals or the friars and stuff like that, they, they argued against him. They said the sunspots aren't actually on the sun. They are little moons of the sun that are going around the sun. So God couldn't have made the sun with a little uh, freckle-type blemish on the, on the face, you know? Uh, and then he said, okay, I'll observe it some more. What happened? After a couple of weeks, the sunspot disappears. And another sunspot appears somewhere else. Okay? If it's moon, it's not going to disappear, just like that. Observation always defeats any kind of argument, you see. So this showed that the heavenly objects were not as perfect as once thought to be. <coughs> His next big observation, huge, 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 he is the first one to discover any moons going around any planet other than our own. Remember all the models so far? They had a moon, just our, our moon. He observes uh, the planet Jupiter through the, um, the telescope. He says, oh my God, it's got moon. These are called the Galilean moons. And when we go to the section on planets, we're going to be learning about them. Io, Europa, Ganymede, Callisto. Ganymede is the biggest moon in the solar system. OK? So I think you're going to see here a little drawing that he made. You see? Uh, you probably cannot understand this. It's probably Italian or Latin or something. And then he's doing his scribbles. This is Jupiter. On a particular day, I think this might mean the 28th of a month and then the 30th of a month. And then this is the second of the next month. So he observes two moons. He writes a little uh, scribble. Then uh, a couple days later, another two moons appear here and here. And then over here and here. So basically what's happening, they're going around the Jupiter. Oh my gosh. And afterwards, at one time, four of them appear. So just from this conclusion, your conclusion is it's got four large moons. Of course, now we know it's got 60 moons, 70 moons. But four of them are large ones. Okay. So we are basically starting to chip away at the theories that everything has to go around the Earth, that the Earth has to be the center of the universe. See, that's starting to get it chip away. This show that there were objects in the sky which rotated around other planets. Not everything had to rotate around the Earth. One of his greatest observations, he observed that Venus undergoes the full range of phases as our moon does. So basically, you can even do this right uh, today. You can look at Venus in the western sky at night. Remember, it's only visible in the western sky. Look at it through your, your telescope, and then look what portion of it is lit. Half of it is lit. 
Is it fully lit? <coughs> a little bit of it is lit. And then through several months, make some observations. Okay? According to the Ptolemaic model, this is the observations what they should have uh, led to. Remember, according to Ptolemaic model, the Earth is at the center. Venus is doing its own little epicycle. And the Sun is here. So Venus is doing its ep epicycle, and there's always a line between them. So according to Ptolemaic model, if you observe Venus through the course of <coughs> several months, what portion of it should be lit, according to the Ptolemaic? A crescent Venus, another crescent Venus, another crescent Venus, crescent on this side, crescent, crescent, and that's it. According to the Copernican model, both the Earth and the Venus are going around the Sun, you see, like this. So when we observe Venus on a particular day, Maybe a crescent Venus is showing. It could be that a quarter phase Venus is showing. If Venus is on the opposite side, it's about to become superior conjunction, right? It's going to be gibbous phase, almost fully lit. If, I, if we go to the opposite side, another gibbous Venus, waning gibbous, then third quarter, then waning crescent. Doesn't that sound much like the, the phases of the moon? We're waxing crescent, first quarter, waxing gibbous, same thing. What did this prove? So what, what uh, Galileo's observations showed is that Venus actually undergoes the full phases, crescent, quarter, gibbous, and all of that. What did it show? Venus goes around the sun and not in this little epicycle, okay? So there you have it, final proof that shatters the Ptolemaic model and gives very hard evidence that the Copernican model is the correct one. This shows that Venus revolves around the sun and not around the earth. This is the final proof that shatters the geocentric model of the solar system. Of course, he writes a book on that, he gets imprisoned for all of these theories, okay? <laughs>